How to stem the flow of boats leaving Indonesia for Australia continues to be argued by both sides of politics and now members of the Defence Forces are joining the debate. The latest to enter the fray is Jim Molan, the retired Major General with 40 years experience with the Australian Army including in Iraq where in 2004 he was the commander of the 300,000 strong coalition force. He also spent five years as the Australian Army attaché to Indonesia. Jim Molan is a fierce critic of the Labor government, blaming them almost entirely for 500 deaths on the high seas. He joined me just a short time ago from Canberra. Jim Molan, welcome to Late Line. Thanks, Emma. Thank you. Now, you recently wrote in fairly unequivocal terms that it's really up to Jakarta to stop the flow of people through Indonesia to Australia and that it could be done in what you say is a relatively short period of time. What is it that Indonesia could be doing on this front that it's not? I think it could be doing an awful lot on this front. Uh, and our good friend Indonesia uh, has domestic laws that are sufficient to disrupt the people smugglers. I was there a week and a half ago. I had a number of conversations with people who assured me that there are sufficient domestic laws to move against the people smugglers. We've also seen, of course, a number of prosecution, prosecutions against people smugglers. But not only are there sufficient domestic laws now, but there are, uh, is a raft of new laws which is held up in the Indonesian parliament. Uh, and I was certainly informed then that all you have to do was for the president to indicate those laws were, uh, were a priority and they'd go through. Uh, you, could, you could, in my view, in a very short period of time, uh, you could close down the people smugglers. And so if it is as easy as you suggest, why isn't the Indonesian president doing just that? Well, I think it goes... It's connected in a strange sort of way to the general discussion we're having in Australia about boats. Indonesia doesn't see this as a great problem. Uh, it has tens of thousands of its own citizens illegally overseas as uh, illegals in other country, be they be it the Middle East or in Malaysia. Uh, they've got a thousand other problems, as we saw from that interesting discussion on Q&A the other day, uh, where Indonesians were telling us what the problems are that they've got. Uh, the first step is for us to impress on the Indonesians that this is a real problem. Now, uh, I, I think the why of doing this has been decided. It's now up to the how. We've got to impress on the Indonesians this is a real problem for us and as a friend they should assist us. We've assisted them as friends over, uh, quite often over many, many years. Yeah, we've had our problems but we've assisted them. Do you think uh, they're in any doubt as to how seriously we do take this problem? Well, I can't understand why with a navy of 150 ships they haven't got one single bloody ship in their search and rescue zone to the south. We've given them patrol boats, which they don't move around to the south. Uh, you know, it, 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 if, if they do believe it's a problem, why aren't they doing something about it? And what do you suspect is the answer to that question? They're not impressed by... Uh, the, 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 they're not impressed by how serious we are in relation to it, to it being a problem. They've seen for a long time that, that uh, the current government has put the sugar on the table, as they said. Uh, and if we're putting the sugar on the table, their view is, why should they go out of their way to do Australia's job for it? Now, uh, everything that I have seen and worked at in Indonesia over the five years that I lived and worked there on behalf of Australia in order to build the relationship was cooperative. Uh, Indonesians will respond to us if we are cooperative with them. Uh, uh, we certainly... And, and, I mean, we saw a very interesting exchange last year... Uh, last week between our new Prime Minister and uh, the President of Indonesia in relation to the joint statement that they signed. Uh, and uh, uh, the words were to the effect that neither side will take unilateral action which would operationally embarrass the other side, or words to that effect. Well, I've got to say that Indonesia has for years now been taking unilateral action in allowing people to pass through, particularly Java, uh, uh, breaking their... Their, their domestic laws as they pass through, corrupting their officials as they pass through. Indonesia has been allowing them to get on to, uh, to unsafe fishing boats and as a result they've created a problem for us but, you know, of a, in a moral sense, uh, maybe 500 people have died. Emma, they can do this. Let's just have a look 
at what the, the tremendous results that they achieved in relation to the counter-terrorist activities they've been taking. Can I just interrupt you there and just talk specifically back to this? You're adamant that boats can be turned back. You say the techniques for doing so should not be discussed openly for the same reason that we do not discuss operational detail in Uruzgan province in Afghanistan. How is that a fair parallel? Oh, well, it's an operational activity. If we, if we say how we're going to do it, we're going to do A, B, then C, then D, uh, firstly, we're increasing the risk towards the, our, our sailors and others who are, and customs officers, federal police, who are doing the stopping and the turning around. Uh, and that's, that is a real problem. Secondly, we are telegraphing what we're doing, therefore we risk failure. So on both those scores, I think we shouldn't do it. Uh, uh, now, uh, I also... Uh, say to myself, uh, well, you know, my experience indicates that we can do it, and my experience in Indonesia indicates that we can do it, but the, 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 uh, the fact that we've got, to, we've got to look at is that once, not so long ago, it was done. And but we've also had an admiral come out very, very recently. Uh, admiral Ritchie has come out and said, of course we can turn back the boats. Navies have been doing this for years. Kevin Rudd, of course, says he thought turning boats back would work, but when Labor came to power, they soon discovered by speaking to the experts that it couldn't be done safely. Yeah, Emma, I really think they're asking the wrong question. Uh, of of the, Particularly who? of the Defence Force. Uh, and I saw today the controversy of the new, immigration, the new immigration minister who was saying that governments should not give directions to operational commanders. Well, I am absolutely astounded at that. Governments, of course governments give directions to operational commanders. They may not give those directions to them at the last minute when they're on the bridge managing uh, an interception at sea, but they give very clear directions as to how it's to occur, in what circumstances X, Y and Z is to occur and where they're to go after X, Y and Z has happened. But what about, as we've seen most recently, desperate people obviously <coughs> do desperate things. What can the Australian Navy do in a situation where people people, smugglers and their passengers are threatening suicide? Uh, I, I, I think there's a, a whole range of things that they can do, but for the reasons that I spoke about before, because those techniques telegraph what they can do and what they can't do, uh, I don't, I, I, I'm not prepared to talk about it, Emma. Now, I know that, 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 that presents a problem in the open discussion of this, this thing, this issue, but if we're talking about a Ruzgan, we don't say that on the 4th of December we're going to send people around the back of, the, of this place and that place and do this and do that. But that's it a is... war zone. Well, I tell you what, the risks... Uh, we've had 500... We've had, what, 40 of our soldiers killed in a Ruzgan province. We've had 500 people die in, in that uh, as a result of the movement of irregular maritime arrivals across that bit of sea. If that's not the equivalent of a war zone, but also we have an obligation to our sailors and soldiers and others that are doing the stopping. But we also have an obligation to the... Uh, let, let's not get this stopping the boats out of proportion. Uh, the stopping the boats are part of, uh, from what I can see, and I haven't, you know, I'm not a spokesman for the coalition, uh, but I speak to a lot of coalition people as I speak to Labor people. Uh, and my understanding is that their policy is not just stopping the boats. It's stopping the boats in a framework of taking the sugar off the table, of sending messages, of being regional and being cooperative. So uh, 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 when you talk about the techniques, uh, that to do it successfully is very, very important. But the reason for doing it, to send messages to people that you're serious, is probably more important. Now, you've been a fierce critic of this Labor government for some time on the issue of cuts to the defence budget, on the performance of Stephen Smith, the minister, and now on border protection. Is there a political motivation behind your words? There's a political motivation behind what I do for the simple reason that governments should achieve outcomes. What I really object to in this government, and, you know, I, I don't mind admitting, Emma, uh, uh, I voted for Kevin Rudd. Uh, I voted for my mate, Mike Kelly, uh, and as such, I voted for Kevin Rudd for the simple reason that what he said assured me, on borders and on defence, assured me that, uh, that uh, a tired coalition government, I could move on from a tired coalition government. I am deeply disappointed in what has occurred since. I find that the people uh, on the other side of parliament, on the other side of... Uh, in the opposition, 
uh, have experience in doing what I want them to do, that is secure our borders, uh, they have a greater probability of success and they're an impressive bunch. If that's political, I'm political. Well, Stephen Smith has dismissed all your arguments outright, saying you're partisan. He says that you're making these comments because you're, in his words, a Liberal Party activist. You've been responsible for handing out how to vote cards for the Liberals and you've got designs on being a Liberal Party staffer. Is that true? Let me tell you, uh, Emma, the last thing I would ever want to be is a Liberal Party staffer. Well, where does I... he get that from? Oh, uh, he's making it up. I handed out how to vote cards for a mayoral election in Queanbeyan, where I happen to live, for someone who calls themselves an independent. I suspect he's a conservative. I appeared standing behind Tony Abbott on one occasion, and guess what I was standing behind him for? For the fair indexation of, uh, of veterans' pensions. Now, <laughs> now uh, uh, the Minister for Defence and I are on speaking terms. There's no two ways about it. I said hello to him in the lounge the other day, and he said hello to me in the lounge. But, that, I mean, it goes away from the big issues. Uh, the, the, the responsibilities of government is to produce outcomes on both boats and on defence. Uh, the, the, this current government, in, in all its leadership iterations, uh, has concerned itself almost entirely with, with inputs. Uh, and inputs aren't doing any good for the 500 people who have died at, seas, at sea and they're not doing any good for the control of our borders. Well, you attribute these 500 deaths on the high seas during the Labor government almost exclusively to the dismantling of the Howard-era policies. How can you, though, discount the, discount the growing numbers of people escaping persecution around the globe? I mean, the UN's Refugee Agency reports more refugees and displaced people now than at any time since 1994. Yes, uh, uh, and certainly the figures that I've seen indicate that there, that, that there were, uh, I think, 12 million people in that category back when the boats were stopped and there's 10 point something million people. How that occurs with UNHCR, I don't know. Uh, but I think, see, I think that's irrelevant. These people are getting into boats. We have not taken it to the Indonesians seriously enough for the Indonesians to stop them getting into the boats. The reason that they drown and the reason that we have to, we have to uh, search and rescue them is because they're getting into boats. Uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the, the, there is the connection. It's, it, it's the breaking of Indonesian domestic law and the, 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 uh, the, the, the risking of life at sea that was encouraged by the dissembling of the, the controls, the migration controls that worked in the past. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, let's not talk personalities, but the fact that there was such a, 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 a rush to dismantle those. What, I mean, at the time that they dismantled them, there was no need for them because they had been successful. Why not leave them there, for crying out loud? Uh, if they'd been left there, they could have applied. And now they've got to be reinvented. And this part, this Labor, the, the current Labor government, of course, is moving in that direction to reinvent them. Jim Mullen, we'll have to leave it there. I thank you so much for your time this evening. Thanks, Emma.